My name is George Charlton and I work as a, an independent trainer and consultant delivering lots of peer-led kind of projects um, across the Northeast. I've worked in and around drug and alcohol services for about 20 years. Um, I'm a former drug user. I'm a member of the European Network of People Who Use Drugs um, and part of the UK Development Project, Peer Power and Upon Prevention. I work as a consultant with foundations building peer-to-peer -peer supply and with us I've got uh, Ricky Lauro, um, a peer for the harm reduction team. The harm reduction union. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about building peer-to-peer -peer and the training and supply programs, talk about what we did to, to bring it together. So the important thing for me right at the start is to say that our journey began in Glasgow. So in, uh, in January 2018, I tried to get a kit where I lived in Durham and I was told I couldn't have an naloxone kit. Put fire in my belly and I hooked up with Steph Kerr, who said, come up to Glasgow and see what we're doing. I spent some time with, with him, with uh, Danny and with Jimmy. And I was absolutely inspired by the way that they just went about their business in homeless hostels, kind of using that drug user radar, identifying people straight in, doing the intervention, leaving the kid. It was awesome, man. It was absolutely awesome. And I just thought, like, we've got to have this in the northeast of England. So came back and yeah, I do this weird thing, me. I put a pillar on my head and I kind of imagine all the things that I want to happen in my life. And the one thing that I wanted to happen more than anything else was to bring Peter to Peter Lock's own training and supply in the middle for So this is going to be a story of two halves. A little bit about how we developed the model at Foundations and then how we use that to seed into working with We Are With You in Redcar. So, Ricky, key components of our project. We were inspired to do this no matter what. Nothing was going to stop us. Work with Foundations, execs, 100% wanted to work with us. Use community mobilisation to recruit peers, people with um, yeah. use drugs experience, real partnerships. Yeah. Use a technical support approach to ready the organisation. Build relationships with stakeholders, police, public health, PCC and media. Yeah. Build peer-led naloxone steering group to build and design a project. The Luxone training and product familiarisation build around the checklist. Began developing peer-to-peer -peer supply in-house to enable fine tuning. And then we hit the streets, making supplies where people are. Used positive experiences of the foundation project to see red car. <laughs> Got the backing of a crazy yellow superhero named Naloxone Man. I think. So I guess what we want to be able to do is we do on a laborious presentation, which is just filled with loads of bullet points and stuff like that. So we wanted to tell a bit of a story through pictures. Eh? Yeah. So we focused on name. Um, we developed a model which focused on three key areas. The first of which was community mobilization and technical support. The second was project from a uh, product familiarization. I am linked to the naloxone checklist. And the third was kind of getting out on the streets and learning what trade. So the, 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 right at the top, the community mobilization part. I'd never worked in Middlesbrough before, so when I came to Middlesbrough, it was absolutely really important that I was able to connect with peers and people who use drugs. But what, like being an ex-drug user myself, I have privileged access, and it was really easy for me to be able to kind of build relationships with people who were just like me. And coming across people like Rick, we've got that instant connection straight away. And I guess that kind of saying, like, do you want to be involved in a project like this? Well, what was the answer? Absolutely, because what we know in Middlesbrough is that in England and Wales, we've got the highest number of drug-related deaths, yeah? We know nationally 15 people every day are dying across England and Wales with drug-related death. You guys suffered really tragic numbers last year and every year, do you know what I mean? So it's an absolute no-brainer that we want to stop our friends dying. So what we did was um, we needed to make sure that we can have this aspiration as a consultant, the peers can want to do it, and foundations 100% wanted to do it, but we needed to make sure that the organization was fit for purpose. So that meant that, like the technical support element is about reviewing policies and procedures, making sure that kind of everything's watertight, that peers can be part of. This isn't a project for us, which is about foundations and naloxone peers. It's about us as a collective. And you can see they're kind of like Danny Ahmed, a, a good friend, an executive partner from the organization, getting down and dirty with us, wasn't he? Kind of doing like um, 
teaching us basic life support, kind of going through the kit with us. The one thing that I should say is that this, the start of the project for me, it came about as a result of an arm's length grant from Ethi Farms. So it allowed me to kind of develop a project and a model to come into, um, into Middlesbrough. Um, you can see on the bottom two left-hand pictures that we've got the, the red car guys there as well, going through the same process. So what's worked for us has been a case of, um, it's not that we're going to develop one model for Middlesbrough for foundations and then we're going to go and do something different for We Are With You. We have this model which we want to replicate across all of the organisations so everyone's coming from the same place. Team Biscuits, really? Oh, no essential criteria. Tea and biscuits are absolutely essential to development peer-to-peer and lots of training and supply models. Make sure you declare it to the benefits agency though, do you know what I mean? You've got to be careful of stuff like that. So then this second picture absolutely represents for us that when we went through the, the, the technical support and the community mobilization part, we learned our trade inside of the foundation service. So we kind of delivered peer-to-peer and lots of training and supply to to patients who were coming to the organization. That allowed us to kind of do any fine tuning on site. But you know what it was for us? It was about coming together, man. And that picture on the top left-hand corner, that kind of represents something really special for us, really. Where was that? Um, stages. Stages, yeah. And we'll do it uh, we give up that. We give out some training. It was the first time we went out and give uh, some training in a professional capacity, in a professional environment. Yeah. That picture to the right hand side there, I don't know whether it's your right or left, but kind of with the two smiley faces. That was like five of us as peers in a room with kind of our peers, training and supplying, giving people the opportunity to live. We did like 20 kids in an hour. It was mint, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and you know what? Like when you look at the picture, it was like 007 Davy Kelman there with her, with her t-shirts on. This was a real important moment for us, man. It was like our identity. We're not just daft drug users with nothing to give. We're working with an organization who absolutely needs us for this project of work. And my experience has been that like, foundations and we are with you need to work in partnership with us. It's been a real partnership. Yeah, the people who lived in the stages, um, the residents, I don't know, because they've seen us uh, as peers, it, it brought them forward. It was easier to bring them in. Absolutely. We've with people like kind of Ricky and Davey and Chrissy and others. These guys are known in the Middlesbrough community. So then you start to get the questions about how are you doing this? Do you know what I mean? Can I get involved with this? So like in terms of getting people onto your programs, it's an absolute no brainer. It's really easy to do. And what we should say, it's absolutely clear. This isn't a recovery project. This is a harm reduction project. And we don't say that you have to be a year clean and sober or whatever to be able to do this project. We say that we respect you as you are. So if you're a drug user, we are working with you. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah I'm on a project at the moment. I don't know if you're familiar with it. A HAP project, heroin assisted treatment. And um, I've been doing that since last August. And it's allowed me to uh, have a life and um, do things like this. Has it been a barrier though? Has the fact that you've been on the hat for the barrier for you been a yeah, yeah. No, it's been an asset. It's been it's made it easy for me. Absolutely, but I think the point that I'm trying to make here is that don't just think that you have to have people in recovery to do this project. People who use drugs are people who've got a wealth of experience and resources <laughs> to be able to use. So then, if we look kind of big picture down there of lovely Emma. Emma kind of really grew, didn't she? Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Lovely to watch. She started out like a little mouse. She's really self conscious, and and, uh, and when she started, you know, it was, it was um, she just grew, didn't she? Absolutely, man. You know what? And I think the thing for me is that we're not just going out saving the lives of people who use drugs on the streets, we're saving our own lives by kind of putting self esteem and kudos and self worth and kind of that idea of like we've we kind of made some sense of our own problems and we use them for kind of purposes. Yeah, no, she was like a, a failed alcoholic. Aye, aye, wasn't it? Yeah, you know and, then, I mean? and then by the end of it, she was, you know, running with it once she was. Standing in a conference call. Come on! Mm -hmm. Amazing. So very quickly, because I'm conscious of time, um, we've got kind of Davy and Ricky, top left-hand picture. Mm -hmm. Recovery walk, what yeah, was that feeling like? Absolutely awesome. We've got 250 kids. 250 kids in a day. So we'll lay down the we'll lay down the gauntlet to kind of go and beat that. But it's not just about kind of hand. I once heard somebody saying, "Oh, I can teach naloxone. I can give people naloxone really quickly." Look, 
and chuck it at someone. It's not about chucking the lock someone at somebody, it's about the quality of the intervention. And I think across our 12 week program, what we've done is go beyond what was kind of on that naloxone checklist, do you know what I mean? In the middle, you have a picture of Andy making supplies directly on the streets, and this is important to us. We make supplies where people are. If they are in outside of Kenji Fried Chicken, we will make that supply there. When we go out, we go out in two. So one people can be doing the training supply intervention, and the other person can be looking at the community to be saying, is there anyone having a little look at what's going on? Because if there is, we're going to go and engage them and say, can we tell you about what we're doing? There's no shame in what we're doing. And in the whole year that we've done this, a bit longer now, we've had nothing but kind of praise and cued on. Do you know what I mean? And then bottom picture, Riggy, car park. Yeah, that was a bit of a moment for us. It was um, found people living, living there. It was freezing cold, and it was full of human feces and um, and a lot, a lot of needles and wax. Uh, and what we thought of is, what can we do to, to get rid of it? To help get rid of that. Absolutely. So the person that was in that picture was trained and given a lock zone. We got that person into hostel accommodation. But the one thing Ricky said is, can we not pick these pins up? And I said, well, yes, we can, but not just now. So our next project for the Harm Reduction Union is about developing peer-to-peer -peer drugs litter projects as well. So we're going to have some training from the council. And it just grows, man. What I also wanted to do, I'm conscious of the time, Kirsten, so I'm going to, I've got to stop watch as well. I think I've probably got five minutes. Is I wanted to get what needed to happen was when we built the project as foundations, we were approached by, to, I was approached by We Are With You, and I met with their executives who said, We want to be able to do these projects. Can you come and do this project in Red Car? Which, um, which we did using the, same, using the same methodology, using the same approach. And you know, like all credit to, um, to We Are With You because they've nailed their flags to the mast and said, Every service that they've got from the south all the way up to Scotland, they're going to implement and roll out peer to peer and a lot of training and supply. And we always caught the press of Stone in a positive way. So we had some good books and coverage. We're going to let you hear just from a few of these guys. Um, I've, I've pushed myself to come to this group. This lad here was going to it. I was like, not for me, do you know what I mean? Got a uh, cracking set of lads, and everyone who's come, people like yourself, have all been really nice. Bang on. Top man, you know <laughs> what I mean? And Adrian's just a fireball, so... Adrian? <laughs> Adrian. Yeah, and George. That's George! Well, now we're like Adrian's the two fucking Ronnies, but I've known Adrian, He's, yeah. he's a George. <laughs> yeah. I was in tears, I was that happy. Yeah, Absolutely yeah, over the moon. Mint for having these by my side as well to support me and show me the love. Friggin' got on wicked, and a minute laugh, buzzing all day, couldn't fall asleep until about two o'clock this morning, I was telling George this morning. Uh, really looking forward to getting back out there, and that, uh, we hope we get some supplies put out for you so you can see us in action. Uh, yeah, that's about it, over the moon about it, I feel absolutely amazing today, same as I did yesterday, looking forward to we can't wait to get out there and go, so back to over to you. <laughs> Good line. <laughs> We've got 40, 45 seconds, so I'll put it on Twitter, go. Right, I'm feeling bang on as I usually do. It's fucking buzzing that we're in this. We've been here 12 weeks. It's just like a big family. Everyone was buzzing. Chrissy got himself a bit upset yesterday because he thought he was going to be a nobody for the rest of his life. And Wayne and Jimmy told him, you can be whatever you want to be. And at the end of the day, you're a fucking superstar serving lives. Yeah, yeah. So yes. we're well proud of George. The manager's just done him in because he even going to give us his office yesterday at the time we recorded. Yeah. So I was proud of him. Adrian <laughs> done him in because he come and knocked us up. Well, even though I was out. <laughs> 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 and I can even press my bell for He got us yesterday, yesterday though, though, didn't he? Andy, yeah. how are you feeling today? Feeling? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Buzzing. Yeah. Happy. Yeah. And rare to go. Yeah. Yeah. One nice. of the things I just want to point out here, Andy just said there yesterday, the manager was going to give us his office to do the training. And that's kind of where we've been with this project, you know, in both foundations and that we are with you. It's been that the peers are part of you know today like we've come into foundations and, and Ricky's got the keys to the kingdom we know the codes to the door we're not we're not stuck behind glass this is about real real core production so it's been absolutely beautiful to both work with both foundations and we are with you and equally to kind of have conversations with the likes of Change Grow Live who've been a real supporter of this work as well so like it's a really exciting time for peer to peer and the trade and supply and we just need to get it done uh, very quickly I'm going to skip that one. We've managed to um, hand out, I think it was, was it six, six kits. 
that's awfully we've saved six six lives and I mean just handing one out is 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 amazing to me. I feel I feel like privileged just to, uh, if for people to stop and let me explain how these work. And then a poster boy for the Guardian yesterday. Boy, that's right. Ben, <laughs> how does that feel being know, in that? You know, they pick the good looking. <laughs> Shut up, man. That's why I was in there as well. And I, how did it feel being in the paper, Nicky? You know what, right? I was like a Cheshire cat, the right. smile on my face, and uh, as soon as, soon as I, got, I got home, uh, I walked through the door and I was like, who's the star of the Guardian newspaper? <laughs> Must have been me, you know what I mean? Aye. And uh, my partner said she'd be proper proud of me and that. She, yeah, she'd be more proud of me when she sees my picture in the paper, you know, when I go home. Are you yeah. proud of you? I'm very proud of me, very proud of me. Like, this time, uh, a couple of years ago, or last, like, two years, two years ago, I'd, I'd uh, be... Uh, so I'm very conscious of the time, Kirsten. I'm winding up now. So uh, very quickly, um, obviously COVID landed. And we had to shut the doors of the service, as did everybody else, minimising the footfall coming into the organisation. Kind of really caused a lot of frustration at times with people who were coming for like reviewers of scripts and all the rest of it. Again, all credit to foundations, working in partnership with the Harm Reduction Union to develop a peer-to-peer -peer COVID project. So basically, we triage all of the clients that are coming in from the outside. Um, Ricky, you can see there, very nice lad getting flowers and all that for our table because that's just how we roll. He's got a bit of a problem putting boxes on his head, but that's been a good project, Ricky. Oh, yeah. Eh? Yeah, I love it. I turn up every day and uh, hopefully it'll carry on that way. And think about it. A service user who's getting kind of confidential information from clients. It's radical. It's not radical. It's just how it is. It, this is how much it means to us. This is how much it means, man. This is what happens when you kind of you help peers to get in control of their own lives and help others. I'm going to skip that. One more slide after this one, Kirsten, that's it. These documents for us, whilst well, there's a million different documents we can use, these documents for us are what we built our project around. So obviously the Euro input, peer-to-peer naloxone, technical support model. We have fine needle in a haystack done by Zoe Shaw. Um, the, the new update which came from um, release. Obviously there's another Euro input document which is Mint. And then the improving outcomes of treatment of op op opioid dependency, which is awesome. I always remember being in a naloxone group in London and you were in this one as well, Kirsten, um, with release and John Strang was there and John Strang said the only problem that you've got around the lock zone is you all ask too many questions and when you ask too many questions you're going to get answers that you don't want to hear so we don't ask questions so we're going to give the last word to this fella. All right no lock zone man here so just wanted to say a huge thank you to the Scottish Drugs Forum for putting on an awesome event about the lock zone. Remember there's no real barriers to supply only the ones we create ourselves. So good luck, have a great conference, and let's flood the place with Naloxone. Remember, Naloxone man loves you. When you focus on problems, you'll have more problems. When you focus on possibilities, you'll have more opportunities. Look for the opportunities, guys, and thanks for listening. Thank you, everybody.